there is one more feature that I would like to spend some time on before we're going to actually calculating some practical examples and that is the LN button. Now the LN itself is the logarithm natural and sometimes you need to use it for example when you're trying to calculate the log growth. So what happens if I wanted to calculate, let's say, ln73? So first I need to find the ln button. And if I look around here, that is the ln button. So I'm going to press and see what happens. Now I can see that there is a bracket opens and the cursor flashes after ln. So this is where I need to tell the calculator what logarithm to calculate. So I wanted to calculate the 73 and if it's just a number itself I don't have to worry about the bracket I can always just hit equal and it will calculate the correct answer which is in this case is 4.29 to two decimal places. But what happens if I wanted to calculate let's say ln 5 minus ln 2. Now clear the screen ln 5 if I just keep typing minus 2 in here then I'm telling the calculator to calculate the logarithm of the difference between 5 minus 2. So that's not going to work because that's not what I want. The delete button always useful because I can just delete the last thing that is in front of the cursor. So let's type in ln2 now. That sounds good, however, because there is the bracket opened here, what I'm actually going to calculate in this case is the logarithm of the difference between 5 minus logarithm 2. So if I wanted to calculate log 5 minus log 2, what I actually need to do, use this button, come back and close the bracket in here. And then close the bracket behind the 2 as well. So I'm telling the calculator with those closed brackets where to stop calculating the log. And then the correct answer will appear which is in this case 0 0.916 to three decimal places. Now let's move on to some practical examples and let's see what is the real power of the scientific calculator is. So let's say that you needed to calculate a long process, for example, 3000 minus 0 0.2 times 500 plus 0 0.25 times 700 minus 2 times 15. Now, if you were using an ordinary calculator, you would need to pick out what calculations to do first. And in this case, multiplications are higher order calculations than addition and subtraction. So you would need to do first 0 0.2 times 500, find the answer for that. Calculate 0 0.25 times 700, find the answer for that, and calculate 2 times 15, and then add and subtract the necessary answers. With the scientific calculator, what you can do, you can type it all in one go, and then the calculator automatically gives you the correct answer. So 3000 minus 0 0.2 times 500 plus 0 0.25 times 700 minus 2 times 15 and the answer nice and easy 3045. Let's say that you needed to calculate the percentage growth. For example you wanted to calculate 15,420 minus 13,000 350 over 13,350 times 100 to get the exact percentage growth. 
So instead of going step by step with the calculations, using the scientific calculator correctly, you just have to type in the sequence once and it will calculate the answer right away. So how do we gonna go about it? Well, I can see that there is a fraction here, so I'm gonna put the fraction in the calculator. Then I type in 15,420 minus 13,350. Then I come down to the denominator and type in the denominator of 13,350. But now I wanna come up at the end of the fraction and multiply that by 100. So I'm gonna use this button, the arrow, to tell the calculator to come and finish the fraction times 100. And what I've got in here, all in one go, after pressing the SD button, the exact percentage value of this growth. So this is 15.5% to one decimal places. Now let's say that we needed to calculate the LN growth rate of the exact same example we just looked at. So let's say that we needed to calculate LN 15,420 minus LN 13,000 350. So I press LN 15,420 and remember now I need to close the bracket to tell the calculator to stop calculating the log here and then take away LN 13,350 and close the bracket again. Now in this case I haven't gotten the exact percentage answer yet because I need to multiply this by a hundred to get to the percent answer. So this therefore would be 14.41% and as you can see there is a slight difference between the LN growth rate and the percentage growth rate. Let's say that you are asked to calculate the average total cost which is given by the formula of 100 plus Q squared over 100 plus 10 Q when Q is equal to 15. So what it means to me that I actually need to replace Q with 15 in the formula. So the calculation I would need to carry out is 100 plus 15 squared over 100 plus 10 times 15. So this is what I need to type into the calculator to get the answer. So 100 plus, now I want a fraction. So I'm going to press the fraction button and at the top in the numerator I've got 15 and I need to square that so I need to press the square button. Now I need to come down to the denominator and tell the calculator that the denominator is 100. And I have to come out from the fraction, add 10 times 15. And the answer is 1009 over 4, of which the decimal equivalent is 252. 0.25. As you can see, we make quite a big use of this SD button. Let's say that you needed to calculate the profit when it's given to you by the following number combination. 40 times 25 minus bracket opens 0 0.3 times 25 squared minus 5 times 25 plus 300 bracket closed. So how are we going to give the calculator the correct sequence now? So 40 times 25 minus bracket open 0 0.3 times 25 squared, again use the squared button, minus 5 times 25 plus 300 and I need to close the bracket now. Hit the equal sign Again, press SD to get to the decimal answer, and this is equal to 637.5. Let's say that I wanted to calculate this, 
but I've ended up with what is on the screen. So when I look at the sequence here, what I see is that instead of 0 0.3, I by accidentally typed 3. So instead of clearing the calculator and typing the whole thing over again, I can just use the arrow buttons and I go back using the arrow button all the way in front of the 3 and I can type in 0 point in there and the correct calculation can be done. Now let's see that I typed something else that I didn't want. For example, instead of 25 in here by accident I put 125. So then the sequence would look like something like this. So again I can go back using the arrow buttons and now I need to make sure that the cursor is flashing behind the digit I want to correct and I just press the delete button that digit disappeared and I can calculate the correct sequence. The last thing I'd like to show you how to use the calculator for solving quadratic equations. Now a quadratic equation is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero and we know that it, this equation can be solved using the quadratic formula which is minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now how can I use this knowledge to solve the following quadratic equation? 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 equals 0. First of all I need to know which number in my equation corresponds to which letter in the generic formula. Now notice that the a is in front of the x squared which in my case is 2 so my a is equal to 2. The b is the linear term which is the number in front of x which in my case is 7 and c is the constant term at the end of the calculation which is minus 4 in this case. And now what I need to calculate is minus 7 plus minus root 7 squared minus 4 times 2 times minus 4 all under the square root over 2 times 2. I think you would agree that this is quite a mouthful. So notice that this is a long fraction so we're gonna start with putting the fraction button in and then I'm just gonna do minus 7. Now there is a plus and minus sign so that means there is two calculations hiding in here so first I'm going to do the addition then comes the root which is this one and under the root I have got 7 squared minus 4 times 2 times I need the bracket now and put minus 4 and now I finished with the numerator and I need to come down to the denominator for that first I need to come out from under the root and then I need to go down to the denominator and in the denominator I've got 2 times 2 and now I can hit equal so the first root will be a half which we know is 0 0.5 how about the second root I could start and type in the whole thing again but I'm a little bit lazier than that so all I'm gonna do is use the arrow button go all the way back in front of the root sign and now I'm going to use the delete button to delete the plus and replace it with a minus and I can hit the equal sign again and I will calculate the second root x2 equals minus 4 in a lot shorter than if I had to retype the thing again.